This is a solar panel. It's a rather simple setup in my car. Just a single solar panel, which converts sunlight into electricity, which runs through two wires down to the solar controller in the car. This here controls the solar panel. Underneath here is the fuse for the solar and the fuse for the battery. We have our inverter. This converts the 77.5 volts from the solar panel into the 14.65 volts that my battery system uses, and that can be stored to run my appliances. It requires almost no maintenance, just a wipe every now and then with a cloth to get the dust off. This solar panel charges my batteries whether I drive the car or not. We're gonna learn more about solar power later, but for now I need to get a little sun for myself. So we're gonna head over to Taichung National Park to kayak through the mangrove forest. This is Taiwan's youngest national park and one of its last remaining wetlands. What's remarkable about this park is that due to its relatively short history, as it was only incorporated in 2009, it's not so much a wilderness area as it is a feral human landscape. Not so long ago, this area was all farmlands, fish farms, and salt fields. Now nature is taking it back. The wildlife that was once pushed to the fringes of human settlements now has been invited back and they have come back and flourished here. A great a great example of that is the blackface spoonbill, which has come back from the brink of extinction and now numbers over 5,000, 40% of which come to Taiwan to nest in the winter. And you should visit now because it's the best season to see blackface spoonbills. What we came here to see today though are these intricate mangrove forests. So let's inflate our boats and paddle over to get a closer look. These are mangrove trees. They're my third favorite tree after number one, magnolia, because it's so good to climb, and two, plumeria, because it smells so nice. But why do I love the mangrove so much? The mangrove is the only tree that grows in salt water. The lush ecosystem created by the roots of this forest are as diverse as any coral reef. And here you'll find many fish, clams, birds, crabs that just thrive here. This national park is really fascinating. The juxtaposition of the mangrove forest here with all of the sounds of birds chirping and the fish jumping out of our way as we row past. Set against the background of Tainan City, we can see skyscrapers just on the side of the river. It very is an interesting juxtaposition and could be a lesson for how nature and man can coexist in the same Place. I did see one blackface spoonbill. If you include this spoonbill, today I saw two. I'm mostly egrets and other small birds. Drifting in such a peaceful environment is a wonderful way to spend the day. As soon as this is filming, I'll stop talking and just drift along with the tide as it goes out. Actually, now this one, Wow, so good. How cool. It's really hard to explain it. You got to come here yourself. There are just the, the sounds of so many, many birds. I don't even see the birds, but I know they're all around me because I can hear the noises that they make. If you want to come kayaking here, there is an application process. I'll put a link to the National Park website application page down in the description. All right, that was fun. My solar batteries are recharged. Now let's go check out that solar plant. I want to talk to some of the engineers and find out how it really works. Because while it was easy to do a single panel system and a single battery system in my car, solar power farms of that scale are very complex and I'm interested to know how it works. Behind me is an 150 megawatt solar farm. It was built by Thai Power. And the Energy Bureau invited me out to make this video. Instead of just one small camper, this generates enough power for 50,000 homes. And instead of using a battery like I do, this goes straight to the grid and it lessens the load on fossil fuel plants around Taiwan, offsetting over 100 million tons of CO2 annually. 好, 
。台电的南延点太阳光电发电站这边有装置容量一百五十兆瓦瓦的太阳光电，然后它的总模组数量有大概四十八万片。除了我们临近的区域可以用电以外，剩余的电就可以流到那个像一些高科技或者工厂都可以用。Have you noticed how flat these solar panels are? They aren't nearly as angled as the ones I'm used to seeing in the U.S. 呃，之所以会以十二度的角度来铺设面板，是因为呃，台南这边的日照阳光铺设的关系，所以以十二度来讲是比较好。如果是在北部的话，它可能会比较水，以居水平会比较低一点。So let's imagine that this is the Earth, and over here we have the sun radiating light towards us. Because the sun is around 150 kilometers away, these light beams are effectively parallel to each other. For us to capture as much of this radiation as possible with our solar panels, we need to position them perpendicular to the sun. At the equator, and here's the Earth's axis for reference, this means just laying them flat on the ground. Boom, you've got an efficient system. But as we move north or south, due to the curvature of the Earth when we lay things flat on the ground, the same length of solar panels now captures much less sun. Than it did when it was perpendicular. To adjust for that, we can angle our solar panels relative to the Earth's surface in order to keep them perpendicular to the sun. So in Tainan, this means 12 degrees, and on my brother's farm in North Carolina, it means 34 degrees. And if we really want to go extreme, at the North Pole, it would be 90 degrees. That means you'd put them on the walls of your house instead of the roof. In practice, this means I get eight hours of good sunlight in my car in Pingdong, but only five hours of good sunlight when I go up to Ilan. This is because my solar panels at Fixed angle relative to Earth, and as I drive north, I change my angle relative to the sun, and less of the sun's energy hits my solar panel. 其实我们像我们那么一个南阳光那么大的，有将近四十八万片，基本上我要从头寻到尾，可能是两三天以后才可以寻得完。那我们这个有透过那个智慧化的监控，我可以看到。每一串二十四片，它的发电效益，我们就是透过智慧型的，我们讲的监控，哎，我看这一串的电流都会比其他的串都还低，相对低，我就针对性的去做处理。那如果是一片云飘过去呢，是所有的串列可能都是会做局部的下降。然后其实我们也有在透过一些。跟外面的厂商合作是说，利用空拍机飞看看看红外线有没有一些像我们所谓的热斑效应。Up until the 1970s, this region was used for salt production. These fields would be flooded with seawater, and then they would use the sun, solar power, to evaporate the water, and the salt was left behind. For each ton of water that was evaporated, 30 to 40 kg of salt remained. When salt production stopped on the island, these fields were left barren as they were unable to produce agriculture. Uh, 然后让那个水可以接到这边来做一个暂时的滞留。在台风来临之前呢，我们也是会先把这个暗场的积水都先排除。那排除到大概剩下地表面的地面水的状态，这样子的话，等下强降雨啊，或者是台风来的时候，才有办法承接这个北边的排水的水量进来。所以，我们这边的开发面积只占了百分之七十，我大概是保留百分之三十，有约六十四公顷的用地是保留绿化的用地。This area is also home to the Chigu Salt Museum and the Salt Mountains, which are worth a visit as well. The rest of the salt fields were converted into fish and clam farms, and also many of them are now being converted into solar fields like this one today. 大家可以看到，我们有设置的那个人工岛啊，然后还有这些类似湿地的状态，就是希望营造一个可以给鸟类在这边栖息的一个处所。那也可以，他们也可以在这边休憩觅食。These nature preserves attract many migratory birds, including black-faced spoonbills, making the wetlands around the photovoltaic farms a hotspot for birdwatchers. 
It's touching to see industry and nature coexisting in the same area. These solar panels will continue to generate electricity for at least 20 years. They're a major part of Taiwan's green energy goals to reach 20% renewables by the year 2025. Zhang Dishi, Taiwan Zuguang.